Okay, so here it is. This is the uh, the new project. What we have here is a 1981 Honda Passport C70. So it's a 70 cc with electric start. And what you see is what I got. So let's pull you out of the thing here. We'll take a closer look. <clears throat> this thing was registered for the road once upon a time here in Newfoundland. And that once upon a time was April of 1985. As you can see, our blinkers and our tail light lens are all original and in fantastic shape. I couldn't get over how good a shape the seat is in. It's absolutely immaculate. There's a bit of dirt on it, but that stuff will clean up. Some issues up here. This isn't really connected at all. Not a big deal. Plastics are cracked in various locations. Uh, the front fender here is cracked. Pretty sure we can fix that. Our uh, front cover slash shin guard or whatever. This thing is really busted up. You can buy reproduction guards like these uh, for about, I think it's, by the time it's shipped from Thailand, I can get them on eBay. Uh, we're looking at about 140 or $150 Canadian. So what I wanna do now, this thing's not running, uh, purchased that way, is I'm gonna pull off that front guard and we're gonna just pop the plug in and see if we can't get this thing uh, making some spark for us. Okay, let's give the key a flick on. Let's turn it back toward. Now there's no battery in this right now either, but that shouldn't affect the thing's ability to make spark for us. So, hold that in against one of these bolts here. And no spark as of right now. So as a quick test for spark on the original spark plug, what I can do is I can just go ahead and try it out on the, uh, the Mrs. CRF here. So let's pop this out here, put our, that in, find something steel. So we can do it right against the top of the plug as well. So you can see, woo! A little bit of a zap there when she kicked over. But you can see that plug works. So I've got the points cover off and I'm noticing that when the engine turns over, so I can do this without causing everything to go tits up, just keep an eye here on the points. They don't really separate and there's some kind of gunk or junk between them. So I'm thinking, let's see if I can just get slowly come around. You can see it's not opening up at all. And it gets to the point where it does. There it is coming now. And there's still a bunch of goop and shit between it. Now that our points plate is out, we're gonna go ahead and take off the condenser so we can test it out, stand alone. So you can see before, it looks like someone actually tried to get this off and uh, it looks like they failed. So I went ahead and started it with uh, the vice grips and got it loosened up so now I can get it the rest of the way off. Now I'll go ahead and I'll remove this bolt here so we can get the condenser completely off of the plate and then we'll test it out. Okay, to test our condenser, we're gonna put our meter in capacitance. We're gonna inflict the light on here so you can see it a bit better. Ground the condenser against itself so we ensure that it's discharged. Next thing we're gonna do then is Negative to body, positive to our pin, and there we go. So that's our 0.22 to 0.26. We're just in a different range. So we know that's good. So one other quick thing I wanna do now with the points, specifically the contactors here, is uh, I'm noticing the one side is still a bit Rusty and dirty, so I just got a bit of 600 grit sandpaper. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna open it up, put our paper in and then try to find a good point of balance with pulling on this, so keeping this kind of sprung. So we'll hold it and you'll see that bit of uh, 
crowd that's coming on. So go ahead and get that all cleaned up. Then we'll put our points back in the bike. So since I just got this popped back on, I'm just gonna do one quick check on our gap and make sure it doesn't exceed what it should. So I've currently got it set up. Let's see. Okay, so we were there. Back this way a bit. Not gonna go that way a bit. Let's see. Okay, so it's closed. And right there it's max open. So it should be between 12 and 16 thou. And it looks like it's actually open more than it should be at this point. So here's our 16 thou, 0.4 millimeter. That is really, really loose. So I'm gonna adjust that to bring it down to 14 thou, which will be right between where we need it to, and then we'll move on. So I just lo I've loosened off the two screws that hold the point in place on the plate. <coughs> and I went ahead and I gave it a couple taps this way to close the gap up. So now here's my 14 thou or 0.35 millimeter feeler gauge. That's right in the middle between point, uh, I guess 12 thou and 16 thou, and I can just get it in my gap, and it just slides with a bit of friction. So now I know that gap is good. Before it was about 20 thou, which is way too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these screws in now. And that should be it for our points clean up and set up. So before I taking the coil off and testing that out, I just wanted to double check and see if we had any spark now that we set the connect or the uh, the points and whatnot up correctly. And sure enough, I can hold this here. Hopefully we'll see this. Lots of spark. So, you know what that means? We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna toss a bit of gas down into the cylinder here. We're gonna pop the plug back in and we're gonna give this thing a little kick and see if she'll catch. Okay, we've given her a uh, gratuitous shot of starting fluid. Let's give her a kick and uh, see if she'll sputter. Oh, she almost caught then. I think we're almost there. more and then we'll look into uh, getting into the carburetor. So I've got to try it once more but this time I'm going to try to be ready with the quick start. When she starts to go I'll try to get down and get some shot into the intake and try to keep it running. So let's see what happens. carburetor off and have a look. So we get our blinged out peace sign key chain out of the way here for a moment. See what we need. Our Phillips screwdriver so we can get the choke cable out. So it's that. And then we're going to want to use eight millimeter socket to uh, take the carb off of the intake here. So that's the carb off. I'm going to go ahead, 
and open up the bowl and just see if there's any junk and stuff in the uh, in the bowl and possibly blow out the few jets and stuff to see if uh, this is in good enough shape to get the bike running on some gas. So as you can see, it's not too too bad in here, but you can tell it's been a long time since there's been anything in here. I wipe my finger through it. I get this like gray, dusty crap on it. You know what that is, it's just old, old, old fuel that's just been in there for so long, it just finally died. So one quick thing I did notice, it looked like there was a bit of fuzz or something. Here, I believe this is the idle jet, and if you look at it, I got this really, really small pin vise drill bit, and poking it in there, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, because it's really small. But you can see like there's a little bit of nose focus, here we go. A little bit of crud there, and that came out of what I believe is the idle jet here. So I'm just going to try to get a uh, get this up and down through that idle jet a few times and see if I can't get air up through that. And if I can get air up through that, then I'll go ahead and put it back together and we can try to get it running. And if not, then we'll have to wait until I get this all cleaned up and we get a rebuild kit. So unfortunately, after a little bit of digging with one of my little uh, pin vise drill bits, like the super tiny drill bits I got, this is still clogged. So I think I'm going to have to pull the choke plastics off of this, and we're going to go ahead and get this set up in the uh, in the ultrasonic cleaner. So I think that's the best thing we can do at this point. So. I'll bring you guys back when I got this apart and we're ready to drop it into the ultrasonic. So here's our shiny new ultrasonic cleaner. As you can see, the twist tie on the power cable there. Still haven't even used it yet. Shiny, brand new, good to go. So <coughs> I need to pick up some solvent to go in this. I read that dilute pine saw can work really well on these, but uh, I'm not 100% sure what I want to use it yet. So I'm gonna give this up for the evening. Uh, should be a few seconds for you guys, probably a day for me. We'll be back and we'll get ready to toss this into the ultrasonic pan. So the light level is going to be a bit low right now because I just flicked on the lights in the garage. It's about two degrees here, so the ballast and the lights aren't heated up yet. But I stopped by the tire on my way home and I picked up some pine saw. And I've also got a little stainless steel strainer that way I can put all my small components like my jets and pins and all the stuff in that and keep them all in one spot and I also pick up a bit of carb cleaner in case I need it after I'm done so let's go ahead and get this thing filled up and we'll see how it works So I'm just taking a few moments now to put the card back together. I've been going ahead and blasting out the various orifices to make sure we're all cleaned out. So I'll go ahead and get this back together. We'll try to hook up some fuel to it before I put it on the bike, see if it's going to leak or not. And if we're not leaking, then we'll put it back on the bike and see if we can get this sucker to run on our own.
One other thing I'm noticing with this carburetor is that the choke is kind of slow to move. It does feel like it's a bit sticky. So I think what I'm going to do, let me see how long it takes for it to fall. Is I'm just going to take this off for a moment and check it, make, just give it a quick clean out with some of uh, the carb cleaners to make sure it's clean and maybe hit it with a bit of light oil. And we'll see if that fixes that uh, issue with that being a bit sticky. And then we'll go ahead and clean up the throttle cable slide, the needle slide, because that was really sticky when I took it apart. And then we should be ready to put this back on the bike and give it a test. So here we have our choke back together now. I didn't bother recording it. You can see how everything is working as you'd expect. So I just went ahead and cleaned up the post, cleaned up the inside of the hole, uh, put some lube here where it contacts this piece of metal. I also put the lube where the pin contacts the the, uh, the case of the uh, carburetor itself. So now we got a nice working choke. So I'm going to get the needle cleaned up on the throttle cable side. We'll get this put back together and see if we can get it running. So here we go. This is going to be first kicks with the carburetor cleaned up and put back on. We'll see how this works out. top of our carb. So I went ahead and took the throttle cable off. Notice a couple things. Piece of plastic cracked off here where the ball end or the cylinder end of the cable sits in. Not too big a deal. Uh, the other part is this wasn't rotating because crust. So now that I've got the cable out, you can see I've got a proper fully extended needle and it goes all the way down. So now I can put this back into the carburetor. It should seat all the way down as expected. We should be able to kick this over and it should idle also as expected. So let's give that a shot. So when I get got the throttle cable in, so now you can see if I pull on the throttle cable, it'll open and close as expected, and it's all the way down. So it's, we're looking at it from the uh, uh, intake side right now. So if I pull this out a little tiny bit, you can see it goes up. It was sitting about there previously, so it just was not functioning properly. So now it's all the way down. I'll set the idle so it's open just a tiny, tiny touch, and we'll kick the bike over and see if we can get it running again. Okay, so here's the situation now. I got her all tuned. Get off gas tank on, gas is on, idle is adjusted, air fuel mix is adjusted. Put another drop of oil in it because uh, it was really low on the dipstick. But here we go. 